Hey everybody, I was going to do this as just a regular Facebook post, but it is so much easier to just talk this out quickly than write a 5 billion word post. So here's my little, you can't, it's backwards for you guys. This is my little sign that I got myself made for my birthday a couple years ago. Attention, please do not feed the klipas. Let's talk about this. What does it have to do with Shavuos? In the Sicha, the Rebbe's talk, Yom Beis the Shavuos of Nun Aleph, the second day of Shavuos in 1991, the Rebbe brought in his Sicha, which literally changed my life a couple years ago, the idea of Halacha Kabes Shammai and Yemais HaMashiach. What does that mean? There were two main schools of thought, many, 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 many moons ago, um, of the sage Hillel, Hillel and the sage Shammai. And they were very divergent in how they would rule on, on issues of Jewish law. Hillel usually took the lenient approach and Shammai usually took the stringent approach. And so throughout history, we have ruled on issues of Jewish law and spiritual matters like Hillel. But the Rebbe, or it's known, and the Rebbe tells us about the fact that in Yomois HaMashiach, the, the, the first stage of Geula, which we are in and we have kind of surpassed in the sense that the whole Geula is accessible to us when we will do the work to access it. Halacha is like base Shammai. Now, we don't yet practice this Misa Bapol because we still have to follow our Rabbanim, but as our Rabbanim's um, consciousness changes and becomes more Geuladic with each of us doing our Geula work in our own life, then Misa Bapol in, in actuality, the Halacha, I believe, will actually change. But the Rebbe actually brings in this Sicha, what does this mean? And the Rebbe says that that Shammai, who always ruled more stringently, stringently, sorry, actually had a higher level of insight than Hillel did. And he could see, Shammai could see where even if something looked kosher on the outside, its expression was kosher, if it was actually a klipa or a ra, something misaligned or negative expressing itself, he would um he would say not kosher because he had a deeper penetrating level of insight and he would say not kosher because I see that this thing, even though it's expressing itself in a way that looks good, it's actually a klipa, a negative force trying to suck energy out of another person um, or you just in general to keep itself in existence. And the Rebbe explains in the Yom base of Shavuos Secha that in the first stage of Geula, which we're in, there's still the potential for negativity, for evil, God forbid, in the world. And we see that playing itself out. However, in um, in this time period, we are given Shammai vision. We're given a deeper spiritual insight, whereas we can look at things, we can look at situations, and we can look at people and say, this looks kosher, but this feels wrong. This feels off to me. There's something off here energetically. And many of us will gaslight ourselves and say, oh, but look, this person is, they need my help. They're, mm, I feel so bad for them. This Or this situation, it looks good. You know, this job, it feels good. This situation, or it looks, it looks good. Why does this feel so wrong for me? This job, this opportunity, whatever it is, it, it looks good. It looks kosher, but why does it feel so wrong? And that's because in our generation, we have the ability to sense is there a klipa? Is there actually a klipa in here? Is there actually a negative energy, a negative aspect of reality in here trying to feed off of my energy, trying to suck me in to feed off of my energy? And we have the ability to see that more deeply in, in this in this time when we have sharper spiritual insight. And if we really see and feel that actually what's here is a klipa, is a negativity, we set a boundary. We have that gavora of shamai. We set a boundary. We said, Please don't feed the klipas. I ain't going to feed this klipa. I'm going to say no. I'm going to get myself out of this situation. Um, I'm going to trust my gut on this one. And um, in that way, we kind of end up starving this negativity out of existence. And that makes the gaula process go so much smoother and more easily for all of us. And we get to a time and a place where there is no more potential for negativity or raw in the world. Um, and we have the, all the manifestations of the Geula. So that's why we have this heightened insight, this Shammai vision to see if what's really expressing itself in something, oh, okay, it looks kosher on the outside, but on the inside, it's actually a klipa trying to get a yanika, trying to suck energy from you to keep itself alive, essentially. And that's why sometimes the kindest thing that we can do for another person who's really in a toxic place is to set that boundary and to say, I'm not going to let you suck my energy anymore. You know, I wish you all the best. I wish you healing. 
but you're not going to suck my energy anymore. I, I'm going to cut off Yanika to this Klippa so that the soul, the real soul can finally get through because some people, their expressed personality, the conscious person that we are interacting with is, is just Klippa that has hijacked the soul and overtaken the personality. And when we and when we say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm, I'm done with the interactions. I'm not going to let you take my energy anymore. Or, you know, you're in a situation, a job, a, a place, an environment that you're like, this is sucking the life out of me. I don't care how good it looks. Cutting off Unika to this Klippa. Goodbye. And that is how we ultimately choose Gaula and ultimately how these Klippas are just going to disappear from the face of the earth. And, um, the more that we are baklita, the Rebbe says, absorbed in Hasidus, which doesn't mean I'm sitting with my face in a safer all day. It means that I'm absorbing the messages and teachings of Hasidus so deeply that my sense of reality changes and I become oriented to reality for what it truly is, which is, you know, what Hasidus tells me it is. I become sensitive to the spiritual dynamics that are playing out and I know how to navigate my life according to the spiritual truth of what's playing out. That is ultimately how we keep any Thing the Rebbe says that's bilti ratzoi, that's undesirable from manifesting. So if we know that we're now in the Geder, in, in, the, um, in a space of Geula, where Geula is possible, and it's up to us to make those choices, to do the inner work, our healing work, our consciousness reorienting work, to plug into that, we're going to change what's manifesting in reality. We have to do Geula. And a part of doing Geula is, please do not feed the klipas. Trust your gut, set those boundaries. And have an amazing Shavuos. You should be Makabala Torah, Basimcho, Bupanemius. You should download this new dimension of God's mind, will, and wisdom and soul that's coming into the world with a lot of joy and in a way that's deeply internalized. Good Yantif.